Good morning and welcome back to the Omega Ronin studio here, or at least the makeshift basement studio. Next to the fusion powered margarita mixer in the intergalactic space arcade, the first Omega Ronin album came out at the end of April in 22, uh, called Halcyon Sunrise. And uh, for an out of nowhere project, I thought it did, it did pretty well actually. Now by well, I mean if we're looking at music revenue and streaming services like Spotify, music streaming makes video streaming look good. It, it, it's terrible. But from a project standpoint, I thought it, was, it did pretty well. You know, it, it grew and people seemed to enjoy it. And uh, I've lost track of the number of albums by now, but I think I'm working on, if you include the singles, the uh, 14th Omega Ronin album. Uh, so I've been pretty busy banging out Synthwave and um, it's uh, been, been actually a lot of fun. Just got my t-shirts in. First batch of Omega Ronin t-shirts. So there's a whole bunch in development and uh, my, my, I'm waiting on my Omega Ronin coffee mug. So at the moment I'm still just drinking water but pretty soon you'll see me with my Omega Ronin coffee mug. Now, uh, some of you may, uh, may or may not know, I'm not a music theory guy. Surprise, surprise, I'm a marketing guy, um, but I love music and I love art and uh, creating electronic music like, combines those two things for me. Um, I like drawing and all that stuff too, but uh, drawing is very hard when you start and stop. And it's always been a very difficult thing because I'm, I'm running a business, but also you know, trying to create video and also trying to create music. So when I get into art, it's like stop, I'm start, stopping. It's, it's like weightlifting or something or exercise. Like if you're not at it every day, you just, you can never get better. So I kind of got stuck and frustrated. Uh, and and with, with music is very, reminds me a lot of uh, editing. I think it just hits the same, same part of my brain as editing. So I could just jump right into it anytime, any place. And I'm at home and it's comfortable and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so you know, these videos are actually pretty cool, I think, because it's, 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 a, it's just a familiar process for me to explain how I'm doing something even if, in some respects, I don't even know how I'm doing things. I have uh, three different ways that I create Omega Ronin songs, and I'll be showing you that over the next uh, couple couple videos. I have one one of the, um, I guess the first way I started creating things is I got this like doohickey that makes chords. And uh, just to play chords, I think you actually kind of have to know what you're doing. Uh, but like I got this rolling device where it's like you can kind of bang on it, and, you know, I kind of bang on it until I get a chord I like. And I play it out and I record it and then that, that locks me into a key and then I know what notes I'm playing and I can build the rest of the song around it and I can just hear it and you know watch this thing evolve and that's what I'm doing right here. song and uh, this is one of the uh, what I would consider like an old-school Omega Ronin song like just smooth it's got like you know just that kind of nice bass throw a lot of reverb and delay on there and the dunk 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 you know, it's not a real complicated bass line um, another way that I create songs is starting on the iPad and I'll show you that here in a little bit I made one uh, just yesterday and I recorded the video but the footage sucks so I'll have to show you some of that without the beginning part of the video and the uh, third way I create songs for Omega Ronin is my favorite way, which is I just get on one of the big pieces of gear and just start to bang away on it until something emerges. And I think you've seen some videos where I do that before. I think that turns into more like a dark wave sound, which is kind of my preferred sound. But uh, when they when, when the when the songs go out in the wild and the albums, and I start to see like what people are listening to, it's always fluctuating, but. Uh, Frequently it's not what I expect. Sometimes the smoother songs do well, sometimes like the weirder, heavier songs do well. It just it fluctuates all over the place. So I try to put a variety of Omega Ronin songs on an album. And uh, well, let's uh, take a quick peek at this one, then I'll show you something on the iPad. And uh, I'll even dive into one more here in this video. And then, of course, these will continue because this is fun. And I need a lot of music for... Uh, for albums, which are just fun to make, it's fun to make albums, uh, but also for the Classic Game Room show, uh, for Classic Game Room 2085 Season 2, which is coming out uh, in 24, and that's going to be a giant 15-hour Blu-ray set, so it's a pretty big project, and to have a, a nice supply of music for that that I own 
is really invaluable. Um, that's a very nice thing to have. Also, not just that I own, but I can also control it. So if I like want a song for a video, I need to cut it short or I need to like adjust it because you duck it under the mix or something. I can I got all the files. I can do that. It's great. Uh, this is great for video production. And then also I need it for marketing because I'm a marketing scumbag and you know that's what I do. You have to be a marketing scumbag if you're going to survive in this industry. So let's take a look at the song. Enough of me rambling. Here we go. To look at the the files here. Hopefully this thing gets focused. There we go. And uh, synthwave is a pretty broad genre. Uh, a song like this, sometimes I have to remind myself to just be patient. I'm trying to hold this in one hand, which is heavy because the monitor's on top of the camera. Uh, sometimes I got to remind myself to be patient and let the song build. Um, so it's slowly building. Now I'm going to put some uh, 80s style toms in here. So when you when it gets to this part, it's going to be like a dun 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 dun, and then I'm going to do the drums in a different, and we're in the uh, TR8S or the, or the Nord drum. And then there's going to be a lead on top, which I'm going to do with the Juno X. Dum 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 dum. So that's just a scratch track. I'm going to throw the toms in here. I might use Nord Drum or uh, TR8S. They both have different, totally different sounds. Um, sometimes the Nord Drum can overpower a song that's kind of delicate like this one. So uh, in that case, I will frequently either go with the uh, TR8S or FL actually has some built-in drums that you can uh, tune nicely. Um, and then there's going to be a lead on top, but if you really want to put a lead on, I, I think once I, once you start getting into the bigger hardware, like this is all software synths, which sound great, and I'm pretty sure that 99% of the people really don't care or can't tell the difference, but I, I can tell that when I put the lead on using the hardware, like an expensive big keyboard, it just sails over the mix and it just has so much more just richness to the sound. Uh, that can, it can really carry the song, and while recording it, I can also adjust it on the fly. So. It's like I'm guiding the listener's ear through the song, since there's no singing. I, I think the the lead synth, in a way, has to carry the uh, listener like a singer would do. And there's no substitute for a singer, but uh, those are you know <laughs> to put a singer on a project like this would just really take it up to the not just the next level, but two or three levels higher because that would be a huge endeavor from the producing side. But I wouldn't rule it out someday. I mean, it's not going to be me, but. You know, someday maybe there will be a singer on Omega Ronin. That's not entirely true, actually. I did do the voice work for uh, the song Future Computer on Touch the Mainframe, which is actually one of my favorite albums. It's a short album, um, but I, I used the, I'll show you this later, I used the Arturia uh, Micro Freak. What's that thing called? The microphone on that. You, I, I'm like totally having a brain fart right now, what, what it was, but... You know, it's like that Daft Punk kind of sound. Um, really can't make out my voice, it's all computerized. But anyway, this is the way that this song is coming about. Let me show you the next one here and then we'll cut up for the next video. Here's another song that I'm working on that I'm building on the iPad. And this is Korg Gadget 2, which I've been using for uh, since the very beginning of my music creation journey, which dates back to 21, I started the, the original couple Turbo Volcano albums were all created in Korg Gadget. It's a great starting point for songs. It's also a great starting point for anyone looking to get into electronic music producing. Uh, it's, it's all of like 20 bucks. In fact, I think there's even a free version, but check out Korg Gadget 2. It's on, I think, iPad and Mac, maybe PC. I'm not sure about PC, but... Um, this is the beginnings of a song. And I say the beginnings because I like to create in here sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I lock myself in a key and then I, and it sort of tells me what keys I need to push to stay in that key, which I find very helpful. And then I can bring all the songs over to the, um, to FL. I use FL Studio for producing uh, the finished project. And I mean, I can even take all this stuff and run it out MIDI into like the Juno X or, or the Matriarch or something, one of the larger, uh, tools that I have laying around here. But here's a quick track that I created in Korg Gadget. And so it's nice to just get the song 
built there. It helps quantize all your notes, which locks them into place. Makes it, so if you're if you're a crappy keyboard player, I'm a horrible keyboard player. Um, it's it's good to just simulate that you actually know what you're doing. You're playing the song. You're a terrible player, but it does some of the work for you to lock stuff into place. Then you can go in there and move your notes and tweak it and stuff. There's that one. We got to see this one here. I put it all together with the scratch track of drums. So, there's, there's a cool song in there. But the synthesizers aren't good enough, in my, in my opinion at least, for Omega Ronin. Like that's just it, the Omega Ronin sound is more Roland. It's different companies, just different sound. So the song comes over here. These are the exact same MIDI files I exported that song, and then started to build on it. song so I'll uh, end the video here for the moment but uh, this is how this stuff's coming together and you can look forward to the um, next Omega Ronin album sometime this fall probably about 12 songs 10 to 12 songs don't forget to check out the t-shirts on omegaronin.com and that sweet coffee mug and because it's me uh, the beer glasses of course <laughs> I mean, you can't have a brand without beer glasses. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm.